Welcome back. Well, there's certainly been a lot of money thrown around in this campaign by both major parties who seem to have forgotten where our economic prosperity comes from. Oil, coal and gas industries provide the money for all the policies and largesse you've seen splash around in recent weeks. Now with policies such as debt zero and the risk of Teal and Green's influence in the parliament, particularly if we've got a minority Labor government, Australia's most important industries are at risk. That's the message from Ian Davies, the chairman of the Australian Petroleum Production and Exploration Association, APIA, who warns that the oil and gas industry, which provides $500 billion a year to Australia, is at risk from misguided politics. For more on this, let's bring in someone who's made this his life's work, Queensland LNP Senator Matt Canavan, who joins me now from Capella in Queensland. Matt, as I said, you're a sole voice of reason on this issue. No matter who wins on Saturday, uh, you know, Liberal or Labor, we've still got risk to these industries, don't we? Exactly, Peter. I mean, uh, I'd give Ian. Ian's a very sensible person himself. Uh, and we've got to make sure that we protect, protect the wealth-producing industries of this nation. When you think about what's the greatest economic issue we face right now, what's the hardest thing for Australian families that are viewing your program? That is the increased cost of living. The living costs are going up, and that's very hard for a lot of families. That's, that's basically... Inflation is always a, a, a consequence of too much money trying to chase and buy too few goods. And so there's two ways to fix this up. One is to reduce the money supply, but that pushes interest rates up, and that's hard. The other thing you can do is produce more. If we produce more goods and more wealth, that will help fix the inflation problem naturally too. So we should be promoting uh, the increased production of our resources. Uh, we see record prices for coal, oil and gas. That's what Ian was speaking about today. And therefore, when the price goes up, when the price of something goes up, that's a big signal. It's a big flashing light in the invisible hand of the market, mm. saying we should produce more of that thing. So there's a lot of demand for our high-quality coal, our gas uh, and other resources. Well, there is a big signal to government saying we should mine more coal, we should produce more gas, because that will help deal with the issue of inflation and guarantee our energy security in the future as well. Yeah, people at home are listening to you going, A, he makes common sense, but G, he knows his way around economics. And I'll say to my viewers, I uh, hired this guy to work for the coalition when we were in opposition because he had a big <laughs> brain. But uh, your, your ability to sell the message out there to real people, Matt, I think is what's won you a, a big audience of people. This specific quote from the APM boss today, Ian Davies, I think is so instructive of the problem we've got ourselves into. He said, the focus of our opponents on stopping fossil fuel projects has had no effect on consumer demand and no effect on emissions reduction. What it's done is to push fossil fuel developments to places such as the Middle East and Russia. That's the brutal reality that these climate crusaders don't want to face. And you see, they're having to face it though, Peter. They're having to face it in Europe now where they had guided or had their energy policies guided by a 16-year-old schoolgirl from Sweden. And uh, the consequence of doing that was to outsource their energy security, their food security too, because most food comes from the use of energy. And uh, they've now become incredibly dependent on Russia. They're trying to move away from that. And so some of your... And that's rebounding on everybody. The mistakes of Euro Europe are now spreading across the world because some of your viewers, I'm sure, if they drive a four-wheel drive or a car that needs diesel, have noticed that diesel prices are going through the roof again. And that's basically a consequence of the fact that Europe had outsourced the production and refining of diesel to Russia. They're now trying to buy less Russian mm. diesel and they're scouring the world, buying up all the available diesel from the US, from the Middle East, and that is pushing the price of it and creating a shortage of it right around the world. It affects everybody. Here in Capella, the price of diesel was about $2.15 when it went past before because of the consequence, because of the stupid decisions that were made in Europe. Now, if we want to defend the free world and democracies, we've got to get some common sense back into the leadership of those free world democracies uh, and actually produce things ourselves again. Our own energy, our own manufacturing and our own food all of these things require some tough decisions to be made and ask for guess, us to guess what? Stand up to the school children and their adult followers who don't have any idea how our food is growing or, or, or energy is made uh, or we make things in a modern economy. We've got to make sure we get back to common sense or we're going to be at a lot, lot more pain than we are today. 
Well, I was uh, born and raised in the Mallee, so farming area in country Victoria, one of the big inputs to farming is fertiliser, right? And Ukraine right. Uh, was a big producer of the world's fertiliser. We, we produce fertiliser here in Australia, but it's one of those industries that are heavy on emissions. And Matt, it's been targeted by these green crusaders, meaning we'll struggle to produce the food we need for Australia if this isn't abated, but we'll also struggle to deliver the export earnings that we always thought we'd have by being the food bowl to Asia. You're right, Peter, although I would just uh, pick you up there that we do produce fertiliser now, but later this year, our last urea plant, which is the most commonly used fertiliser, uh, will shut. Intertech Pivot Plant in Brisbane is slated to shut later this year because they can't get affordable gas, the very issue that Ian Davies was raising that we spoke about earlier. And they've built, this is an Australian company, they've built uh, fertil uh, urea plants in Louisiana where there's access to cheap gas. And so this is the consequence of us not developing our own gas resources to the extent they could and we lose these sort of things and therefore lose our, our ability to, to, to feed ourselves. And keep in mind, while that Glasgow conference was on, do you remember that? Do you remember all the palaver about us saving the world and, and changing the temperature of the globe in 2050? While that was on last year, Russia and China both banned the export of fertiliser at the same time that we were all the Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin didn't go to Glasgow. I think they were planning something else. And, and they banned the export of fertiliser. And now you've got Sri Lanka, now you've got Europe, all struggling to provide food security at an affordable price to its people. Now, let's God help we don't end up in that position. I've been speaking to farmers on a trip through this area, and they're paying double what they used to for fertilisers. Now, they're doing OK right now because food prices are high, but what does that mean for people in Australia who cannot afford to balance their budgets, who suddenly can't afford to buy a steak every week, trying to buy more mince? Uh, you know, it's, times are tough for people, and it's a consequence of us not investing in our own resources. Just a quick one, we're almost out of time, but you're up for re-election uh, in this election, back for the Senate. If win lose, or, win, lose or draw for the government, but if you're back in, if you're voted back in, you're not going to be silenced in the party room on these issues, are you? Well, look at my record, Peter. <laughs> I'm... Um... I, I, yeah, I think some people, some of my, some of my colleagues would wish I'd be silenced, Peter, but uh, no, I, I won't be doing that because I just think it's too important. And look, I, I've been proud to stand as a senator for Queensland and I think the role of the Senate, if it's going to exist, is uh, to, to be a house of review, to uh, sometimes uh, mm. uh, 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 be a note of caution. The old saying of George Washington is, is very true, that the Senate, that the US Senate obviously in this case, it was designed so that you'd pour a cup of hot water into a saucer and uh, let it cool. So the Senate was like the saucer letting the hot issue cool. Now, that doesn't happen in the Senate anymore. You know that, Peter. It, it basically is a kettle and it boils up an issue. And I just think I've tried to, I've tried to make sure that we, OK, everybody's talking about net zero, but somebody, somebody in the Australian Parliament maybe should just put the, the alternative position. Because this is how stupid the whole thing's got, Peter, how crazy it's got, that the mainstream position in this country right now is that we should fundamentally transform our energy and food systems based on technologies that don't yet exist in a generation. We'll do that in a generation. And my position, which is a radical one, is that maybe, maybe we should just think a bit before we jump off this cliff. But I'll keep doing that, Peter, because I'm very worried where the world is headed. I think you can see that now. And let's hope we don't end up in the same position that Europe is today, tomorrow. Good on you, Matt. If I was in Queensland, I would be voting for you top of the ticket. Thank you for your time. <laughs>